In this video, I'm going to talk about using different elements of narrative in um, from some of the literature and how that can be useful to you as a factual storyteller, whether you're a, a documentary maker or a journalist working in TV or radio or text. To begin with, I want to talk about some of the concepts of Mika Bao. Mika Bao talks about uh, narrative as having a number of different qualities and this is useful for us as factual storytellers because it can help us break apart the uh, stories that we tell and the elements that we're working with in order to think more critically about how we can best tell the story and how we can tell the story in the most appropriate way. So Mika Bell says first of all that a story should contain an actor and a narrator. The narrator can be invisible, what's called effaced. So quite typically in novels um, quite, it's quite common for the narrator to be invisible. You never hear the word I in those types of books where there's an effaced narrator. The same is the case in um, news articles. In news articles the narrator is effaced. We just focus on events and the, the narrator is invisible. In some documentaries the narrator is invisible but quite often not. Quite often we have a voiceover or a presenter and so the narrator is no longer effaced. So that already helps us think about one dimension of the way that we tell the story, whether the narrator is visible or not. And quite often it's the genre that tells us whether it should be or not and some of the conventions around that. The actors in a story, by contrast, are those that actually are involved in the events of the story. And a narrative should be a series of connected events caused or experienced by actors, says Mika Bell. So we've got this important consideration that a story needs to have a series of events and that the actors have some sort of role in those and that they are connected. And we'll come back to that later on. First of all, I want to talk about this other aspect of narrative, which is the idea that it has three distinct levels, the text, the story, and the fabula. What Mika Bell identifies is that stories have elements, they have, um, they have stories, narratives have stories, and they have texts as well. So if you take a, a fairy tale like Snow White or a, a factual event like the assassination of President Kennedy, that um, narrative has uh, events, it has characters, it has places, times. This is what he calls the fabula. And as a, as a factual storyteller, we pick certain characters, places, times and events to use as the ingredients of our story. So different people can pick different elements from the same thing. So the assassination of President Kennedy, we have lots of different stories that choose to focus on different elements of that event, that narrative. Once you choose those events, then you create a story from those. And, we, and as I said, you can create multiple stories about the same narrative. But finally, you can also have different texts from the same story. If I create a documentary about the assassination of President Kennedy, I'm selecting different elements from that. I might write a script as the story, but that script can be used as um, a piece of video. It can be used as pure text. People can just read the script. It can be narrated for audio or it could be animated. So we can create the same text from multiple stories as well. So again, that distinction is, is useful for us as factual storytellers in thinking about the process that we go through in creating our stories. As a storyteller then, this means that probably the core ingredients, I would say, of any story are characters and setting. Um, we often pick the actors of the story. We need to tell a story about who was involved and um, where that happens is also an important ingredient, ingredient because that allows us to create movement and sequence in the story. So looking again at those concepts from Mika Bao, this idea of, of actors, this idea of connected events, um, 
this is what we can start to use as a storyteller if we want to tell a story about a particular issue. So if I look at something like pollution, pollution is a subject, it's not a story, it's not a narrative. If I, if I want to tell a story about pollution, I need to find the characters involved in that and I need to find the settings where the action is taking place. This is what Mika Val calls the umwelt. Now, those characters and those settings allow us to create movement in our story. So the obvious example of this is conflict. Very often we rely on conflict between characters, we're drawn to conflict between characters as the subject of a story, as the drive behind a story. And in fact this is probably one of the most common uh, pieces of lazy storytelling I would say, especially in, in news and journalism. Um, conflict is created, we set up um, two different camps uh, for an interview, for example, and we create conflict in order to create a narrative. But that can be quite lazy and it's often criticised. So are there more sophisticated um, or more appropriate ways to tell stories once we're aware of this? Well, as well as conflict, there's chemistry between characters, people being drawn together, partnering up, joining up. Likewise, a very common technique for injecting movement into a story is to cut from setting to setting, to move from place to place in the actions that happen in a particular event. So once you're aware of this, um, it becomes easier to think about the possible ways in which you can tell a story about an issue. You can look at the actors involved, the characters involved, you can look at the settings and you can think about the movements between those and how that might inject movement and sequence into your story. Here's one example to illustrate this. This is um, a story about nail bar workers in California and um, it starts with a character. It starts with Connie Nguyen who works in nail bars and we learn about um, the skin rashes and respiratory problems that she's had. So the audience is engaged right from the start of the story by connecting them with a character, describing the character and then a movement is added by shifting scene from this close up on this person to the beauty industry as a whole and um, nail workers as a whole and then to another character Carol Migdon who is taking action around this. And this structure is quite common in longer features particularly investigative stories where we start with a character and then we um, which creates the uh, question why are we hearing about this person and then we answer that question by talking about the wider context. Here's another example, this is about America um, and its uh, homeless uh, strategy and this starts with Quinn Raber as a, um, as a, a key character uh, arriving at a bus station, so we've actually got setting very early on as well, uh, it talks about the you know, an overcast day in August. So we've got character and setting right from the first paragraph. Again, what's important here is you need to answer the question, why is this person important? Why are we hearing about this? And of course, we might move to a different setting to keep the story moving along. Sometimes stories start with setting rather than characters. This is a, a story about um, water pollution in uh, Flint, Michigan and we start with a scene of water rushing out of fire hydrants. Uh, again the character is introduced quite early on and the concern over this but sometimes it's because the event, the setting is important itself. Sometimes it's because the setting tells us about the characters. Um, this is one of my favourite examples about someone who um, was uh, uh, receiving a sanction, a benefit sanction, and died. And it says, you know, we know that he was actively searching for work when he died because a pile of CVs he had just printed out was found a few meters from his body. So we have a setting that tells us, uh, it shows us rather than tells us about the character. Sometimes the setting is the character. In this case, we're looking at the towns the economy forgot. Uh, and we start with a scene of decline in Blackpool. And that's what this story is about. But you'll notice that people are introduced still quite early on in this story. 
This story about Italy's most notorious tower block, again, is an example of where the setting is, to some extent, the character. And the podcast S-Town, which is uh, one of the most famous podcasts made, uh, is uh, a, a, an example of a story where the setting is so much the character that it's the actual name of the podcast. Um, it's well worth listening to this podcast because it is an example of masterful storytelling. And if when you do listen to the podcast, think about how setting is established, think about how characters are used, think about how movement is injected into that. Now, this is also important because it allows us to look at new platforms like virtual reality and consider the role that character and setting play in that. If you read around some of the literature around virtual reality and what uh, virtual reality creators say about their work, you'll find that setting has a particularly important role in virtual reality. So we have a quote here from someone at the New York Times talking about how the place is almost a character in virtual reality. Now, having illustrated all these uh, core concepts of narrative, this idea of um, character and setting and creating movement between those, there's a final thing to consider when you're creating stories using these techniques. And that's that you must always have a point. You must always have a reason why you have introduced these characters, why you are moving the audience through the different settings of the story. So as soon as you introduce a character, you raise the expectation in the audience that there is a reason why you have introduced them to this character and likewise to this setting. So it's important that you watch this video by Ira Glass. Um, this is embedded in the slides for this presentation. It's about five minutes long. Ira Glass is a very well-known audio uh, producer, radio producer with This American Life. Um, and another masterful storyteller and he talks about how sequence is created and tension is created in a story but there must be a point there must be some sort of reason why you're being told this story what's the resolution what does this mean um, am I going to learn something from it where is it going so do watch that video and I'll illustrate what I mean with um, with this example this is a, a video um, that was created on Twitter using a tool called Apple Clips. Apple Clips allows you to put captions on video and move them along with the video that's being played. And the story in this case was about a cleaner's strike at Ibiza Airport. That's the subject. If you were telling a story about that, you might think about characters and settings. The, the obvious setting is the airport and indeed the video itself is consists of a sequence of scenes of messiness essentially in this airport with captions explaining why it's messy but the video actually doesn't have a point as um, journalist Dev David Gregory Kumar makes uh, the point it doesn't answer the why question why are the cleaners on strike so if you are looking for a point in your story, you should always check if your story is answering those why questions. The first question is going to be, why am I hearing about this particular person, for example, or why am I in this setting? But also, why does this matter? Why are these things happening? So always make sure that your story has a point. So that's... Um, all I wanted to say in this video, just to recap some of the key points there, we're looking at narrative concepts because they help you break down the problem of telling a story. They help give you new tools and techniques for finding stories and the elements that are going to help you to tell them. But they also identify new challenges. For example, you might look for characters and setting as ingredients to help you tell a story about a particular issue, and you might look for movement between those, such as conflict in chemistry or physical movement between settings. That will help you tell the story, but it also should help you identify the challenges in relying on things like conflict. <laughs>
And finally, the genres and techniques that we're using raise all sorts of problems that we need to anticipate and address. We're factual storytellers, so we need to make sure that we are not misleading people, that we're not falling into lazy habits, um, cliches in the way that we do things. Your next challenge then is to make sure that you read Narrative and Media chapters 1 and 2 by Helen Fulton. That's the reading for this week. Um, those chapters talk about some of the concepts that we've covered in these videos and um, others as well and will give more depth to flesh out what we've introduced here. So make sure you read that reading this week. In addition, you can find extra readings at the link there at my bookmarks on Pinboard for all the research that touches on narrative. So do try and read more widely as well as the initial reading.